Alright guys, so today we're going to review a Toyota MR2. guys so behind me today I got a Toyota MR2 so first off I'd like to thank the owner for letting me review his car as you guys know I do have a MR2 of my own but it has been abandoned or unloved for around a year now I am now in the process of slowly rebuilding it as much as I can when my financial allows it so slowly but surely I'm gonna get the MR2 back to its glory days for now i'm not going to talk about my mr2 because today we are going to talk about this mr2 i've known this mr2 for around a decade now because the owner has owned it for a very very long time so i've been seeing this car a lot through the years so i'm actually quite delightful that i can review this car today so let's go around have a look at the car all right guys so if you guys are wondering what kit are on this car so you have a mixture of borders kit and also the side piece which is from bomax so I believe all those old school people will definitely know what Bomax is. Nowadays you don't hear that much from them but old school people will know. Okay, now let's take a look at the interior. So first thing I notice is all the aircon vents are all perfectly intact. Which mine is like, well, more or less half dead. So I've been searching for aircon vents like forever. And of course for someone that's owned an MR2 for so long and has given it so much love, you guys can see like, the dashboard, the meter cluster, everything is in prestige condition. Even has the triple defi meters right here, which I would definitely love to have as well because it definitely suits the year of the car. Little carbon gear knob and my favorite thing, the roll cage. Because it's very rare to see owners running a full roll cage in cars like this. I believe there is. There's definitely a few as well, but yeah in Penang very very rare this is the sign where you know the owner do actually put his car through his spaces not just purely for show although some people do put on location just for show all right guys so now let's take a look at the engine bay so what the owner has done is the owner has really transplanted a 3s gte from a caldina gt4 because previous engine that the owner had in the mr2 actually blew up so yeah since it is already blown so might as well just change to a newer version of the 3s gte which also provide much more horsepower com compared to the older version as well and since it's a newer engine it's definitely much more reliable and hey it's a toyota right so when have they not been reliable ecu wise the owner is currently running a standalone setup so yeah there is no need for the old pesky airflow sensor now the owner can run the all trusty map sensor so all right guys now for the fun to begin it's time to test drive the mr2 all right guys so now my very first drive of this mr2 so the fun fact is actually guys i'm not sure you can see the condition of the road but it actually just stopped raining like i don't know like maybe 15 30 minutes ago so the road is actually uh semi wet so i'm not really gonna drive it hard because i don't want anything to happen but one thing i noticed is every time i want to shoot a footage of me driving an mr2 it will rain for sure even my red mr2 i'm having the same case so it's like uh the sky is like playing a joke on me like yeah if you're driving a car that is famous for snap over steer then i just give you a bit of rain and see how it goes what a joke but, okay anyhow So enough bitching about the weather not treating me good. Let's try out the MR2. Um, the turbo definitely is pull very fast because I believe it because it's a stock turbo. So yeah, yeah. 
definitely what you expect from a 3S GTE uh, Slide under steer Oops, traffic Driving a kind of a snappy go kart. Yeah, but definitely a very powerful go kart. Yeah. The boost pulls the the turbos pull so easily that I don't even feel it like I don't even feel like it's like a turbo car. It's more like a very powerful NA car. So it's, for me, it's like it's very predictable to drive. At least the power band for me is very forgiving because it's very linear. Yeah, as you can tell, guys, I imagine turning much slower than usual because road condition is still semi wet. So, yeah, I'm not gonna push my luck. the hills right, must respect the king of the hills suspension wise I think it's a bit steep because if I'm not mistaken the owner actually go to track with this car so it isn't really absorbing the bumps on the road quite well but yeah I can work with this suspension although it's slightly steep but the damping is actually not that bad it's so much better than certain cars that I know that the suspension is so steep that it doesn't even bad you can barely feel any bump or rebound on it it's just like one piece of metal stuck there and the car just keep popping into every single bump from the speed and the pushing driving that I'm doing it's still it's good it's still under control yeah but if you really want to push this car hard it's not for the faint hearted it's not like yeah you really need to be very comfortable with oversteer or snap oversteer to actually drive this car to the limits Uh, 
Nvidia is slightly on the softer side of things but compared to my MR2 it's still so much better because my MR2's brake is actually quite nervous when you press on it I really have to do something about that Alright guys, so I've just done test driving the MR2 My god, the difference between this MR2 and my MR2 is like heaven and hell Although the way the turbo kicks in the, is quite similar But once the boost kicks in, the torque and the pull is so much different Because my MR2, you, of course you can feel the torque kicking in You can feel that it's pulling you But this car is on a slightly higher level compared to mine And on the handling department, heaven and hell, for sure. This car is so tight and so predictable, whereas mine is very loose. It's like, if it feels like it, it will understeer. If it feels like it, it will oversteer, depending on its mood. It's quite unpredictable. So getting used to driving mine, driving this is definitely an ease. But as I mentioned, the snap oversteer factor is still there. So always still be cautious when driving an MR2, unless you're very familiar, because I know there are very expert MR2 drivers out there that's very familiar with the car so for them definitely not an issue for me at times I still get slightly nervous because the main factor is it's not my car so I don't want anything to happen to it and as you guys can see the root condition is still semi wet so yeah that adds, adds to the nervousness of it so as I mentioned like the sky doesn't like me when I'm shooting MR2 because every time I, I want to shoot MR2 it will rain for sure anyhow that also adds in a bit of fear factor and also fun factor but all in all you can't complain about this right awesome car it's a fun compact mr car that i believe the price is currently still very reasonable compared to other jdm sports cars out there because i think this car is slightly underrated compared to the others not too sure why because maybe it never actually got the fame it deserved here in malaysia or maybe because people are just afraid of the snap over steer that this car has but as long as you're a cautious driver you don't drive crazily is fine and the feeling of getting used to a step over steer will actually come through time so yes it can be a very fun thing also because it's a fun challenging thing and yeah you can see the owner of the MR2 is now test driving my MR2 he's gonna complain a lot for sure later on but anyhow I want to thank the owner once again for allowing me to review his MR2 today so guys if you'd like to see more car review videos on my channel do remember to subscribe to my youtube channel give this video a like comment in the comment box below and share my video out and i'll see you guys next time